I've already talked about the need for community. Um, I'm running out of time. Uh, the early church had all things in common. Um, we need to be willing and share. I've already laboured much of this. Um, so, uh, so the police state, FEMA camps, and all that coming destruction will do two things. It will bring judgment, but it will also bring us together. That's the important thing again. God's going to bring us together through the trial, trials that are coming. And um, we read in Acts chapter 2 that the early church had all things in common. All things in common. They, and they sold their positions and goods and parted them to all men and every man had, uh, as every man had need. Well, if we're going to be mobile, we've got to get used to sharing things anyway. Okay, so we need to look after each other. Now, in the in-between time, we just need to know who, the, who to give to and who not to give to. There'll be some people not to give stuff to. Because if you give to them, you haven't got to give to somebody else that the Lord wanted you to give. So you just need to be prayerful and thoughtful and, and uh, uh, in the spirit when you're doing things, making transactions. So... Um and they continued daily in one accord in the temple, breaking bread in house to house. And, and they had gladness and singleness of heart. And they were being persecuted. But they, they continued together. So that's the, the purpose of this talk, is doing things together. So let's move on. Destination North Country. If we are leaving the USA for the Middle East, then... Uh, any community structures or fortifications, physical things that were built, are only temporary. We will have to leave it behind. According to Scripture, we are not heading directly to Israel, as I read it. And this is perhaps a paradigm shift for many. But when I read the Scriptures about the regathering of Israel, they're regathered out of the North Country. As I see it, we're not even in the North Country. Um, so... Uh, it is here that we will get our Hebrew culture and language together. What would be the purpose going to this North Country? We can get it together as a nation. At the moment, we're individuals and little congregations. And hopefully, the congregations are starting to talk to each other. But we've got to get from a group of congregations to an actual nation. And so, that's going to be a process. And all the stuff that's coming against us here in America and elsewhere is going to make us. It's going to make us. Some things are only formed in the furnace. God's going to burn off the dross. And what's left is going to, be, is going to last the distance. So God's going to get us together as a people. So that, later we join with the house of Judah. Judah joins with us in the north country. And then later we join with Judah in the valley of Jezreel and return to the land. The, the scriptures give us a lot of detail about the regathering of Israel. The only reason that people are ignorant is because they've got paradigms that, that don't quite fit. They're expecting the rapture tomorrow or the tribulation. And what I'm saying is that there's some stuff that's going to happen before then. That the breakup of America is going to lead to us going to the north country as I understand it. So let's uh, uh, read on. So we're going to be in the north country and Judah's going to join with us there. That's not the north country but it should be because it's a nice looking bit of scenery. I love mountains. Uh, in fact I do hope there's some earthquakes in Israel because I like mountains so I wouldn't mind the Lord creating a few more. Uh, anyway hopefully there'll be places to go fishing. Jeremiah 3.18 In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of America. It says the land of the north. Initially I thought that might be North America. Um, but uh, it's not because I read elsewhere in Jeremiah that the land of the north is by the Euphrates River. So if we come out of the land of the north and the house of Judah joins with us there, we've got to be there. So this shows me that what's happening now is God's awakening the house of Israel within America and we're going to be leaving here for the Middle East but we're not going directly to Israel. We're going to this north country first. 
And I, I, I'm sorry if I'm raining on people's parade when I say that. I want to go directly to Israel, but I have to read his scripture. Thy word is a light unto my path. So there's plenty in the scripture about the regathering of Israel, but it's a paradigm shift. Jeremiah 16. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no, no, no more be said. The Lord liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel uh, from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their own country. And there's going to be a time to, to leave that land of the north, and it says in Zechariah, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, saith the Lord. So uh, where is this land of the north? Well, I'm just guessing, uh, but I, I peg it. It says in Jeremiah, uh, the north country by the river Euphrates. So it's got to be somewhere there in the Middle East. Uh, and by the way, this is not a huge area of land. It's, America is much bigger than this whole area here. So I believe that the house of Israel is going to get trimmed to the bone. So this Sodom and Gomorrah generation is going to get cut to the bone. It's going to trim off the fat. And uh, there's the Euphrates. It's roughly along the line, that black squiggly line. That black squiggly line is just north of the Euphrates, but it's basically there. And I've pegged it the northern part of the Euphrates, which is north of Israel. And that's roughly where the Medes are, the, the Kurds. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But we're definitely going to come out of this north country, wherever it is. So uh, there's greater Israel. The, the, that's the current state of Israel. And there's a little bit there called the West Bank or the Judea and Samaria. And they haven't even got full control of that. But what's promised to Israel is much greater. And it needs to be because the Texans wouldn't be happy with anything less. That's for sure. Uh, they need somewhere. I mean, even their hats wouldn't fit in the current state of Israel. Not even the Texan hat will fit there. So God's got to make it a bit bigger. Uh, I don't draw a line down there. That's a line between two rivers. The Nile, which is the river of Egypt, and the river Euphrates. That's the boundaries. That's where Abraham walked. He walked from all the way up there, and he came down... Then he went into Egypt. So everywhere Abraham walked, that's the, that's the boundaries. And uh, I dare say take all of this as well, all of Saudi Arabia. And we've got to turn that sand into um, blooming um, agriculture. And it, strange as it might seem, uh, that's going to be green and verdant at some stage. People marvel at the Arabs, at how they, the Muslims, at how they can live in a desert. You know, how wonderful. Well, it's not quite like that. Wherever they go, they bring the desert with them. So when the children of Israel return to the land, they'll bring the green trees and everything with them because the land will lush up for its people. It may look barren now, but it will be the Garden of Eden by the time the Lord's finished. God is a God of order, not disorder. Okay, so summary and conclusion. We are awakening to Torah. We are the house of Israel, whether physically or not, because the house of Israel and Judah have those that are companions, that are, that, that are with them. We're all told in, in, in Hebrews, ye are come to the heavenly Jerusalem, to Mount Zion. That's actually where we're from and going to. So whether we're physically from Israel or not, we're all from the heavenly Jerusalem. Just like Caleb, who had another spirit in him. Okay, so whoever we are, if God's tapping on us to start reading Torah and learning Torah, it's because he's bringing Israel back to the land. I'm not concerned with the DNA side of things. I don't care if my mother's Jewish or if my mother's not Jewish. What I'm, what I'm worried about is what does my father say in his word? What's daddy say? Everything else is just details. You know, who I am. I can't choose who my mum and dad is. I can only choose what I do. I just need to know the game. We are a long way from being perfect. A great trial is about to begin. 
uh, God will bring us together under duress. That's what it's going to take. Because when the pressure comes on, all the barriers between us start to melt. You can't get olive out of an olive without crushing it. But when you crush the olives together in the press, the oil starts flowing and the spirit starts moving. So the things that are against us are for us. They're not against us. They're for us. Even though it may feel like we're under some pressure, that pressure is going to make us. We are being sifted. We will be sifted and uh, greatly humbled. This time is going to humble our hearts because the only way to get through it is by brokenness with the Father. doesn't matter how many press-ups I do. I need to do a few for sure. But uh, uh, that's not going to get me through. As America and the world turns into chaos and destruction, a remnant of the house of Israel will make it through by loving Yahweh and one another in humility. So I've laboured all of this. We will gather into groups out of necessity. We will leave this land for the north country when the smoke clears and then to Israel proper. In the meantime, let us seek shalom and pursue it. Mark the perfect man. The end of that man is peace. And so that's the end of the talk. And Yevarechacha Yahweh v'yishmerecha Ye'ir Yahweh p'nei v'alecha v'yichonecha Yesar Yahweh p'nei v'alecha V'yasim lecha shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you May Yahweh make his face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May he lift up his, Yahweh lift up his face to you And uh, or countenance And give you peace Shalom So thank you very much And thanks for your patience and your shalom Appreciate it And I also have um, other talks, by the way, on the Kingdom of David uh, and all sorts of topics. Um, uh, World War Three and the Second Ancestors, I've mentioned before. And um, many of these are up on, uh, on YouTube or on my website, tenlasttribes.com. Uh, so I've put that together mostly because people in Australia um, and New Zealand are... Uh, don't want to listen. So I had to have some place to actually put some information together. And because I put this website together, I'm now in the United States. Just through that. Just through meeting somebody. Somebody said, come over to the States. And then I went, oh yeah, well maybe one day. But it actually happened. So God works in mysterious ways. He really does. So thanks very much everybody. God bless.